my father, is a UC Berkeley alumni. Starting the year after I was born, each summer, he would take the family to a family camp in the Sierras called Lair of the Bear, the family camp of UC Berkeley. Every year, I received a week of remarkably effective propaganda. While other children were learning to sing their ABCs, I was learning marching band songs like Sons of California and Big C, or even the Stanford Jonah, which ensured I not only loved the Cal Bears, but had disgust for our rival with their ridiculously high tuition and laughable mascot. I mean, seriously, what kind of school has a person dressed up as a tree, as a mascot? So when I graduated from Chico State, I still got my season tickets for Cal football. And nothing can bring me to joy quite as easily as watching the Bears win an important game. Unfortunately, the inverse is just as true. If you want to see me th throw a ridiculously irrational temper tantrum, temper tantrum that no grown man should ever have, join me for the two-hour long journey in the family minivan after a demoralizing loss that I know the Bears could have won. It can be so bad, it comes up in the confessional. I bring this up because all of us have some version of this. We have something we are tempted towards emotionally attachment to that is not nearly as consequential as we treat it. For you, it might not be sports. Maybe you have a favorite TV show that you're strongly connected to or a musical band. For my wife as a teenager, apparently it was New Kids on the Block. Or maybe you just love arguing about some technology or something. Maybe you're an iOS person and you love sticking it to Android people. Or maybe it's politics. Now don't get me wrong, politics are significantly more important than most of the obsessions I just mentioned. I mean, it's no Cal football, but there's no denying that politics has a real impact on people's lives. Nevertheless, following politics can end up being just as much of a sport. People have their teams and irrationally follow them. They care more about whether their political team wins or loses than the actual government policies that result. They'd rather see important legislation fail than see the other side get credit for it. I think it is against this backdrop that we can best appreciate today's gospel passage. Jesus is confronted by the Pharisees who are trying to force him to pick sides. Which team are you with? Are you with the Romans? Or are you with the Jews? And their goal is simple. If they can reduce Jesus and his message into a simple partisan, pro-Roman or pro-Jew message, it makes him far more easy to dismiss. And at the same time, if they can get one of the groups angry at Jesus, that may also cause his demise. But Jesus refuses to take the bait. His answer fundamentally changes the conversation. Ironically, he does it in a way that gives them an answer to their question. At a simple level, he told them to pay the tax. He gave them the answer they were looking for. Yet at the same time, no one could confuse his answer with a partisan one. He called us to something far higher. 
as Catholics, we are to be in the world, but not of the world. We are called to take seriously our civic responsibilities, including our responsibility to vote. But we must do so in a way that remembers that we are called to something higher. Politics is not our God. Jesus Christ is our God. And if our political advocacy as Catholics sounds like a simple partisan one, we are failing to follow the example of Christ. The model that He gives us today in the Gospel. So I encourage you to take your vote seriously as a Catholic, just as I intend to. But at the same time, let us take seriously Christ's message of love and compassion, not hate and division. We must not reduce ourselves to being simple partisan vessels, obsessed with politics as if it will be our salvation. It is very troubling to me to see political sport spreading and infecting so many of us. We've been suckered into first becoming watchers of the sport and over time becoming fans of one team or another. And it's because of this transformation that a month from now, millions of Americans, including many Catholics, will throw a temper tantrum that will make my f football antics look mild. Today, Christ remind us not to turn politics into an idol or an obsession. The church and the world have survived far worse than whichever political candidates you and I fear. We must not let political sport reduce us from being beloved children of God, doing our best to serve Him, into easily dismissible partisan warriors. Instead, let us repay to Caesar only what belongs to Caesar. But to God, we must give him our whole heart, our whole mind, and our souls.